Hi friends! Today we are covering all of Natasha Denona's blush palettes with the exception of her mini ones and the big contour palette. I apologize, don't have that one. But if it's your first time here, hi! I'm Alicia. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I am a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, to get head over to my Instagram. If you want to check out my virtual class schedule and to see what goes on outside of YouTube, well then please sign up for my newsletter down below. I was inspired to do this video after I had uploaded my glam face palette review because in that video, I had also swatched all of my Natasha Denona face palettes to give you some context in case you were wondering about the comparisons, if you're wondering about the different blush colors and the highlight colors that exist in all these face palettes. So what I wanted to do is actually apply the face palette on my face because I know swatches can be helpful but Believe it or not, there might be someone out there that does not have a single Natasha Denona face palette, might be wondering about the colors, how they apply. If you happen to be around my skin tone and you want to see how these products apply, how they look on camera, well then here you go. All timestamps will be down below accompanied by the actual palette name. The first part of the video will just be me applying the palettes and of course I'll have the picture of the palette that I'm using and will signify what products I'm applying. And the second half will be me just going over the different palettes, my thoughts on them, what I think the differences are and what my favorites are. So with that said fam, I'll see you in a bit.
Did we have fun? Was that helpful? Well, if that was all you needed, well, thank you so much for coming. If you wanted a little more insight, well, we started with the Diamond and Blush palette in Daria. I think this is a fun concept, right? You have the three or rather two cream products in here being the Glow Base and the cream blush and then you have a duochrome powder that I placed on the apples of my cheeks to give a more iridescent effect. This also contains the diamond glow powder which is not glitter although it might resemble it when you see it on the skin. It's all pearl and mica and what that does is give a scatter twinkle effect on your cheeks. You might be into that, you might be not. With that said, this palette might not be for you because you have a lot of that diamond powder in here. You got a whole tray of it in here. And that is followed by the powder blush, which is more of what I think a color enhancer. It is the same shade as the cream blush in the Daria palette. So if you want to maybe set the cream or improve on its longevity just to lock in the cream base. And then you have the Glow Extreme Powder, which I like to apply all over the cheek product. So that was the final swoosh, if you will, for extra shine and dazzle. Out of all the blush palettes that I own from Natasha Denona, this is the one I reach for the least because overall is more cooler in tone. And although I can't get away with the hues of the highlight shades, I do feel the cream blush color lays down a little cool on me. So although beautiful and as you saw, it has amazing shine. I would typically not reach for those colors. So just as a heads up, another heads up, the light change today is insane, friends. So if you just see a constant shift in light, I'm trying my best to keep up with what the sun is doing and what I have to do with my glam core just so you know. Next up, we have Citrus, and definitely out of the two between the Diamond and Blush palettes, I will definitely reach for Citrus. The cream blush color leans a little more coral, it's a little more warm, and the Glow Base has more of a bronzy look to it, so it doesn't appear as distinct as the one that exists in the Daria curation. The Duo Glow has a intense like lime, iridescent shift to it. So it's definitely going to add pop to the cheek. And if you're not looking for that extra enhancement, if you will, of color and shift, then this is probably a throw away shade for you. Because again, it's, this is if you really want to amplify your cheek look, it's going to give it glow. But because of that lime shift, is, is definitely impactful in terms of your cheeks. And also the citrus palette contains the diamond powder, which again, creates a glittery sparkle effect. The powder blush enhances the shade or just locks in the cream blush texture. And the Glow Extreme is the high shine powder formula that just lays on extra glow and whoa. Okay, when I countered the Glow Extreme in the smaller palettes, which we'll get to in a minute, a slightly different texture. The Glow Extreme found in the Diamond and Blush palette is a little drier. It's more of a, I guess it is more of like a creamy powder texture, whereas the ones found in the smaller palettes, well, no, that's not true. My apologies, let me correct myself. This is Glow Extreme, what I'm thinking about is the Glow Impact. The Glow Impact texture is more of a gelé to powder texture, which might not be as aggressive as the Glow Extreme. You can see that you're gonna get a little more texture from the shade. It's very creamy in the pan, but when you lay it on your skin, it has amazing shine. And again, I like to use that shade as a finisher after the diamond powder and the cream base and everything has been applied, you just slap on the Glow Extreme and it ties everything together well. And you see the end results, shiny, shiny cheeks. So if that's not your thing, then maybe there is just far too much product in the Diamond and Blush palette. However, if you do own these, don't feel discouraged. You don't have to use all six products at once. You can definitely play with how you layer them, which one goes on before the other. Maybe you don't apply the cream blush, maybe you just apply the powder blush, 
Or if you are a deeper skin tone and you have the citrus palette, you can play with applying the more lime shifty duo glow shade higher on the cheekbones. So not all is lost if you have the diamond and blush palettes, if you bought them because you saw them online and you saw them in photographs, you felt compelled to buy them because they look so beautiful. What do you do now with all this product? You can definitely get your makeup's worth out of these palettes. You just have to maybe be a little more conservative with how you layer the products in here. Maybe if you notice, I apply all the diamond powders with a damp sponge. I think that is the best way to get the smoothest and most even application with these diamond powders because the hydration from the sponge serves as a little bit of adherence for the particles just so they could lay on the skin smoothly. You can use a brush, but I would recommend that you apply the glow base cream first just so you have a little bit of stick for your diamond powder to lay on. What's next? Oh, we took a look at bloom and then tan bronze and glow now bloom was a hit with a lot of people because as you saw six pans of cheek and highlight products is a lot for one person to now have a smaller size i think definitely more consumer friendly less intimidating and you see that the cream shade from the bloom palette universal in terms of it being this rich wine berry tone that you can sheer out or build up the glow cream base has more of a pinky hue to it so it does have shine but it's not going to have the same impact as the color that exists in the diamond and blush and now you have the glow extreme which is pinkier in tone and then the duo glow powder which is not exactly a blush it definitely has a stronger shift and i like to apply this on the apples of my cheeks on top of the glow cream base and the cream blush although i love the colors in here it's not my favorite tone of blush it's very hearty the the wine berry color comes through and i might have to experiment with where i place the cream blush maybe higher and then i'll use the duo glow lower on the cheeks more on the apples of the cheeks just so it could have a softer gradient effect because as you saw when i applied the cream blush shade on the apples of my cheeks it really just gave me a heavy flushed look which works for a lot of people that is a look Okay, but when it comes to the bloom palette and my complexion, I think it will work better for me to apply the cream blush higher, go with the duo glow lower, and then bring everything together with the glow extreme, which is a lovely texture. It has incredible shine, and when placed on all the cheek products, like you saw the shine, okay. It's a lovely color. With Tan, Bronze, and Glow, this was definitely one of my favorites when it first dropped, and I absolutely adore the blush and bronzing powder in here. Before we get to that, however, I do love the cream base in this palette. The color definitely leans more champagne, and for my skin tone, I think appropriate for me to wear as a highlighter. Now, when I turn my arm to the side, you can see there's definitely uh, a good dose of bronze in the undertone. And when I turn, you can see more of the champagne glow. And the same thing occurs on my cheekbones from head on. You'll see a little bit of a shadow because, again, the cream base does have a little bit of that warmer bronze golden undertone to it which I'm fine with because actually I apply a little lower so I could get some of that glowy bronze on the apples of my cheeks and then going in with the super glow which is more bronzy in tone just a lovely color to place on the apples of the cheeks when you want a little bang bang and shine now the blush and bronze powder Natasha formulated this tone to be a little more toasty almost like like a ruddy type of a bronze, I think works very well doubling as a blush, especially if you're around my skin tone. If you don't want to keep it exclusively in your cheekbones, you could bring it a little lower, buff the leftover product that's left on the brush, and that will be enough pigment to tie in the entire look from hollows to apples of cheeks. And of course, going in with the Glow Impact Powder, which you see here takes on 
like a jelly to powder texture, but just look at that shine. When placed with all the cheek products in here as a final swoosh down, a lot of shine, but if you love bronzer exclusively, you don't even touch blush, okay? Maybe something for you to consider because of the shiny products in here between the Glow Impact Powder, the Cream Base that again is very warm and golden, and the Super Glow, you're gonna get a little color on the apples of the cheeks. It might not be a traditionally hued peach rose or berry shade, but some gonna end up on there, okay? And the cheeks will not be left naked these cheeks i'm talking about these cheeks next duo we looked at was the love glow palette and my my personal favorite which did not do well with everybody else the bronze cheek face glow palette now going into love glow when i first reviewed this with the love palette i recognized that this was pink 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 this is a more straightforward color story you can see it based on what exists in the compact I found that the Glow Cream Base, unlike a lot of the cream products before this palette, this doubled as a highlighter and a blush. So when I applied it on my cheeks here, when you see me head on, you do see a little bit of that pink hue from the cream base. When I turn my head side, you can detect more shine. So that's what the Glow Cream Base serves as. It's like a, it's a double agent, if you will. So you see the pigment there on my arm, but you could also recognize the shine, which I like. So if you are waiting for a cream product that served you both highlight and a little bit of color then it exists in the love glow palette the super glow very pink a little textured here in this palette i managed to buff it into my skin and smooth it in but you see just how impactful this shade is it's more of like that cooler pink well actually i would probably identify this as like a, a neon pink on the edge of it with lots of shine. So you have to dedicate yourself to this color story fully and, and embrace it because once you apply that color on your cheeks, it's a wrap. And the diamond powder, again, I would apply this with a sponge. And just for funsies, I'm taking my BK Beauty sponge and just tapping some on the cheeks here. Now heads up, when you see it on your skin, it will look like sparkles are just sitting on your face. That's the DNA of the product. I would just let it sit because when you shine a light on the diamond glow, it is like so shiny. And if you are a performing artist or what have you, I think this is a great product to have in your makeup collection because now you can rely on this and not necessarily glitter to create that same sparkly arkly effect on your cheeks. I think it's just a matter of experimenting and playing with different tools and where you apply it on your face that will definitely determine how it will look and in that process you'll find the best method for you. And the Glow Impact Powder I went in again over everything, very shiny and compared to the one that exists in the Bloom palette, let's see here, the Glow Extreme, again, is a different formula. So this is the Glow Extreme from the Bloom Palette. This is the Glow Impact from Love. And you see Glow Impact from Bloom has more pink. Glow Impact from Love has a little more of like that gold pink combination. Both are beautiful. I do prefer the texture of the Glow Impact Powder versus the Glow Extreme. The Glow Extreme, as I mentioned before, when covering the Diamond and Blush palettes, has a more creamy powder texture in the pan, where the Glow Impact Powder has your jelly to powder texture, which I think a little more user-friendly and applies a little smoother on the skin, in my opinion. Now with the bronze cheek. This debuted a new texture for Natasha. Uh, I call it the putty. It's not like the cream bases that we've seen in previous palettes. It has more of like a 
a putty type of texture that people hated. I liked it. I felt you just needed to find the right brush because when applied on the skin, especially this shade, it had like a, a pink opalescent look to it. Definitely not as shiny, most definitely not as shiny as the traditionally formulated cream bases in her previous palette but I do like it just to give a soft focus glow on the apples of my cheeks. And the actual cream blush, a very, very soft shade that surprisingly appeared on my skin tone. I know I'm not the deepest, but just a heads up, if you're around my skin tone, it will apply as a blush because when I turn head on, you can see the shade and I do have to build this shade up. I went in with it a couple of times here no problem at all because I do love the color. It's softer in hue. It's, it's like a level under, well, several levels under, the color in the Glam Face Palette. Just that more neutral tone of a blush that I gravitate towards. And then I followed with the Super Glow Bronze. I apply this in the hollows of my cheeks. I know that might be a big no-no for some who traditionally just use a cream bronzer or matte powder bronzer product in that area. I don't mind because the color is so beautiful and when combined with the cream products in here, it, it just works for me, okay? And with the Super Glow Nude, this shade is just amazingly shiny. And when you apply it over everything, it just ties it in all together beautifully and the end result is marvelous, which led me to dub this as my favorite blush palette at the time, but when trying all of these, the shift is shifting a little bit. I feel the bronze cheek is one that you have to use all the products. If you don't use all the products, then you don't get the full benefit and bronze experience from this offering. Whereas the other ones, you can get away with maybe two at a time. This, you gotta go in with all the colors, I feel, to get like, to really get the full color story and just that bronze look, especially if you pair it with the bronze eyeshadow palette, forget it. And the last two we have is the Love Cheek Duo with the Glam Face Palette. I do not have, okay, so I lied at the beginning. Well, more so, I just forgot to mention this. I don't have the light colorway for the Glam Face Palette. I felt from all the palettes that I just presented, I didn't need it. Will I eventually get it? Maybe, but I'm not rushing to. And I might have to do this video again, or I could just save the clips <laughs> and insert them when necessary, but let's move on. The Love Cheek Duo, when I applied this today, I said, wow, I remembered when I reviewed it, I was impressed by the tone of pink that exists in this duo. I actually have it on me now on this side and I feel the color sits between the shade in Daria and the shade in Citrus. This is not too cool, but it's also not too neon pink. It's a, a nice medium pink for my skin tone that sometimes I like to apply. Yes, I gravitate towards the more warmer shades, like the one in Glam Face, as you see on this side. But I don't mind this shade from the Love Cheek Duo. I loved how it applied, very smooth on the skin, and I felt the tone of it was user-friendly, whereas I felt I needed more strategy with the Daria Cream Shade. That pink is, I feel, a little too cool on me. It's, I'm like living on the edge of Easter egg with that shade, but the pink in the Love Cheek Duo I adore. And when you follow with the Glow Impact Powder, which again is my preferred texture, you see the Gel A2 powder texture. Again, Glow Extreme is more, let me get a Glow Extreme. The Glow Extreme here in bloom, this one here, you see it has a little more texture. It's just, I think, a different formula altogether. I, you know, implied by the different names, Glow Impact, Glow Extreme, the Glow Impact Powder from the Love Cheek Duo. There's a shift in there for sure. I think compared to, let me go get it. Compared to Mother's Divine Rose Highlighter, let's do a quick swatch, shall we? I do believe, just from memory, that the Divine Rose Highlighter leans more gold and the Glow Impact from Love 
is more pink. So a lot of people had wanted the Divine Rose highlighter to have a stronger pink flip. I think you get that from the Love Cheek Duo. And I love to apply the shade all over my skin when everything has been said and done. I just take the Glow Impact and just whip it on everything. And the, ugh, look at that shine. Now, the lights are on, so it's gonna look majorly shiny. But if you're worried about texture, this is why I prefer the Glow Impact Powder versus the Glow Extreme because of the gel -A to powder formula. I do feel it lays down smoother. It very much resembles the texture in Pat's Divine Rose Highlighter. But if you want more of a pink flip, especially if you apply this on top of the cream blush, then the pink from here is going to bring out that pink shift from the Glow Impact Powder. The recently released Glam Face Palette, I have it in dark. This cream shade is gorgeous. Definitely one of my most favorites out of everything I had just showed. I think it sits right under the Love Cheek Duo shade because I love me a pink as I said, but the ruddy coral tone in the Glam Face Palette, it goes with everything for me. It's more neutral, but it still has that flush of color to bring your complexion to life. And the Super Glow Powder, which actually... I don't think exists in the other palettes that I show. It's called the Star Glow. I don't know for sure if this is a new highlighter formula or if that's just what the shade is called. I have not confirmed that. My apologies. This, I do feel, does not exist in the other palettes. This is a very smooth powder. It lays down beautifully, silky on the skin, and has incredible shine. Just how it lays on the cream blush, I just think is fantastic. And the fact that it's in one palette alongside eyeshadows makes it an essential palette to travel with or just to have nearby. I don't know how the lighter champagne Star Glow Powder from the light palette will appear on my skin tone. I could only assume it will appear something like how it did in the Daria Diamond and Blush palette, maybe a little warmer, a little warmer. But I'm a fan of the Star Glow. This stuff is amazing. Shine, effortless, very smooth on the skin. With singles, yes, like the I Need a Nude Glow, which I adore. This is again the Gel -A to Powder formula that just looks beyond smooth on the skin when applied on the cheekbones. And I actually rely on the shade to wear on its own or to layer on top of the several face palette shades that I have. That's great to use alongside these. All in all, if I had to share my favorites right off the bat, the Love Cheek Duo, I know. I just like the fact that it has two products in here and I don't feel overwhelmed. I know four is not so much, but sometimes I just want to use two products. The Glam Face Palette, of course. And if I needed to pick one more, we're looking between Love Glow, Bloom, Bronze Cheek, and Tan. I'm toggling between, I can't believe I'm saying this, Love Glow and Bronze Cheek. I love the golden champagne tones in tan, most definitely. I, I could use that every day. But just to change it up a little bit, what's making me lean towards Love Glow is the cream base in here. The cream base has color to it that I think just adds beautiful shine to the cheeks and I feel serves as a great foundation. Like, see how that really livened up this part of my face? So what I'm saying, fam. And I overlooked that when I first reviewed this. I did not fully embrace this shade and the beautiful texture, okay? I think it is more emollient than what exists in the Glam Face Palette and in other palettes, but when applied with the sponge, it lays down beautifully, you know, just for fun. Okay, let me take my Tonsetto brush. And right here on the top of the cheeks, this is why it's crucial to apply the cream base first. You need to, fam. If you try to apply the Super Glow on dry skin, 
it's not gonna be good. But on top of everything, look how beautiful that is. And the Glow Impact Powder, which the Love Cheek Palette includes, like I had mentioned before, my preferred texture over the Glow Extreme. I'm just gonna put a little more. Wow, am I now saying that I like the Love Glow Palette better than bronze? Oh my God. We'll see, I I'm gonna change my mind again, I'm sure, I'm sure. It's hard fam having so many. I'm applying actually the cheek shade from the bronze palette closer to my nose since I can get away with it considering the shade is very light. Then how about a little bit of super glow nude? Just right on top. <clears throat> Can't get enough. And just press it all together. I do think, I, I mentioned that I don't like to use sponges. However, I do feel they are crucial when it comes to these textures. They allow the products to melt into the skin in a way that leaves behind an even finish. You can even pick up the powders in here with the sponge and again, Look at that. So I know that was a lot of makeup I just presented, but I hope this video serves as a resource for you if you had your eye on any of these face palettes. Let me know down below what your favorites are. If you have ever tried a Natasha Denona face palette before, techniques to share with our fam down below. I'll see you down in the comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, face palette extravaganza, monthly favorites or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.